Hi guys and welcome to a brand new Netflix Death Note update video for you guys. Today we are doing the third Netflix live action uh, update and we have so much news that came up and we're going to be talking about it. Today we have GoPro Kill with us. How's it going buddy? Hello. Doing well? Yeah, nothing too, nothing too exciting. Just uh, I'm talking about this. This is how I'm spending my Monday morning. <laughs> Monday morning is the best morning to talk about Death Note. All mornings are the best to talk about Death Note. <laughs> uh, yeah, all, all day, all night. In this uh, podcast, we're going to be talking about a lot of things because a lot of news has happened since the last update we did. Um, basically, this is a series where we just update you guys on whatever's happening for the Death Note live action that's going to be coming out August 25th on Netflix. Uh, we have a brand new full scene that came out. And we're going to be talking about that. We're also, uh, the Death Note uh, movie was actually pre-screened at a Comic-Con. And uh, there were uh, some very mixed reactions on this movie. Uh, so we're going to be talking about th those reactions. And finally, we're going to be talking about an interview that happened at Comic-Con with the entire cast. And some of the uh, art posters that came out. So I think we need to start with the, the biggest... Uh, the 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 meatiest bone here um this entire scene that came out which was a very in intense scene we're talking about uh, a scene where um light meets Ryuk for the very first time and um so uh we're just gonna go through the scene uh, uh and uh, explain everything that happens and give our thoughts on it so obviously we start out with uh light being in a uh, science classroom everything's a huge mess and he he seems uh, very freaked out very scared um and so an apple comes out, and that's when we hear, shall we begin? And that right away freaks out Light. Like, what, what would be your reaction if you saw that happen to you? Just like some, some shall we begin, and then eat an apple thrown, like, towards you. My first guess is that it's probably Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, people don't know who Austin is. It's, uh, it's another member in Daydreamer Studios. My first question is, like, is wouldn't Ryuk have eaten, like, the whole damn apple? <laughs> right? I thought I would have thought of that, too. But I guess, like, symbolism of an eaten apple is, like... I don't think there's symbolism. I just think that they forgot that he'll eat a whole fucking apple. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, like I, I remember compared to I know this is the Americanized fresher version of Death Note uh, that we're talking quote about unquote. here <laughs> quote 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 so many quotes around that uh, when uh, Light first sees uh, Ryuk in this scene he's very scared and in the anime the same thing when Light sees Ryuk for the very first time he's very freaked out as well so there is some commonality between the movie and the anime in that sense so far it's similar but the the thing is like we get more of a realistic reaction from uh, Light in this version well, I mean, I guess I guess the whole dream argument is not as funny as it used to be. I don't know, but like, uh, um, I like, how, but I do like how uh, Ryu transitions from being like, "Oh, a dream." I like that. Dreams are yeah, where you yeah, can yeah. do whatever you want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love that. Like, uh, Light's like, "Oh, I'm dreaming." Like, what's what, the, the, like you're just dreaming of a fatal demon, and Ryuk's like, "Yeah, you are dreaming about me, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> he likes dreams, uh, Kyo. Who would have thought? Oh, I wonder why. Right, and uh, so right after this, like first interaction, Light's obviously like very freaked out about this, and Ryuk points out like, "Oh, there's some noise. Something's happening outside." And he points him towards uh, the window. Uh -huh. That's when Light goes towards the window to go check out what's happening. It's Kenny, the the, the bully that we saw in this first thriller yeah. uh, with his friend. And he's uh, bullying another girl. I don't know for you, but like I feel like Kenny is the very first victim that Light writes down in his death note. I think that's what's going to happen here. Probably. One thing I recognize is that Light has a, a punch, uh, got punched. He has a mark on his forehead. So this is not his first extra interaction with Kenny. Kenny is basically the school bully in this situation. Uh, it's uh, 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 he's he's bullied like before and everything, and so because uh, uh, in the scene there was a, uh, a moment where Mies, uh, Mia was getting bullied by uh, by Kenny and Light steps in, and then that's when the punch comes in. Yeah, I think that since this is a more since uh, this part is a more isolated incident, um, it makes it uh, it'll it'll make it kind of harder to point out, or it'll be like a uh, it, it'll be like the starting point where. Uh, um, L just comes into like a crime scene and he sees the body and he uh, just like the head's knocked clean off and, and everything like that'll be the I mean that'll probably be the first uh, bit of gore that we get to see in this film. Definitely definitely and I, I really like the idea that they're, they're they, they keep 
like the idea of a dream. So like Ryuk says, in this dream of, of yours, we could change the situation. Uh, we just write down Kenny's name and he takes a death note and hands it to Lei. And what confuses me about this is I don't know if this death note is the one that Light received when it first fell from the, from, uh, from the sky or if it's Ryuk's death note. Hmm. And so I was looking this up and there is a rule. I think it's the thir 13th rule in the death note. It says the god of death... Uh, must at least own one death note that uh, that death note must never be lent or written on by a human So this basically confirms that this death note is light's death note that the the extra one that fell that uh, uh, Ryu managed to sneak past the Shinigami King. Yeah, well wasn't it um crap um I'm trying to figure out like how many rules were uh, how many extra written rules were there in the um like in the death note that Ryuk added on just four like the uh, the those two fake rolls is what you're talking about yeah he added two uh yeah uh in the anime they they add two uh two fake rolls in in the death note right. like uh, if uh, uh it, it was something I, I forget what they were specifically there was a 13 day roll and another roll and oh, basically yeah. um uh, the other roll is like if anyone who if this death note is burnt and anyone who touched it will die right right so that was the idea so and there was a 13 day rule like if you write someone's name in it you must write another name within 13 days um and uh and or else you will die. So it it was that was the setup that light light made which is absolutely a genius setup. Um but back to the trailer. Yeah, um so uh I feel like um what the what uh, Rico is doing here he's he's encouraging light. He's like write down Kenny's name. Do it. Like uh go ahead and kill him. Like we could change we could change this dream of yours that you're having right now. Yeah. What do you think of that approach uh, from Ryuk? Um, I feel like it uh, sort of pushes him a little further along, like, but um, or like the thought, the thought that he's uh, manipulating light a little bit. Um, it doesn't bother me so much. I mean, I think it's a different, uh, a different way to come at it because, like, if any uh, kid knew that this thing actually worked, or like that this uh, book actually worked, would they actually use it? I think that, like, if this is his second kill, then this will probably be, uh, like the final push over the edge where he's just like, I can do, I can change the world with this. <clears throat> but, um, Definitely. but, yeah. uh, what I think is uh, a little more realistic is if, um, somebody is like in the anime where light actually picks it up and takes it home and just looks over it and just, uh, just, I don't know. Like he just examines it. Like any, any person would like, just, um, eh, it looks like, or just be all like, um, eh, it looks, looks fake, but Hey, it couldn't hurt to try it. Right, but like that, that, that's that's what's uh, I don't know if this because uh, there is a scene in the first trailer where like light re reads the the human whose name is the rain in this note shall die. So I don't know if that scene comes before or after this specific scene where he reads that rule. Hmm. So I think it's after because he looks very confused. And something else I want to point out here is so at first like when Ryuk pushes him, light says nah, like I'm not I don't want to I don't want to do that and Ryuk's like I know you want to like go on like go ahead you're gonna uh -huh. help this girl that's getting bullied by Kenny and everything and so what does light come out with an excuse he's like oh I can't do it I don't have a pen I can't kill him <laughs> I don't have a pen I would love to but I can't I don't have a pen <laughs> So I think that's just, I think pen. that's what, I think for me, like, that's just what little humanity he has left so far is, uh, like, just trying to find any excuse he can to not do it, because instinctively, um, most people don't want to kill each other. I mean, mental, or, like, uh, deep down somewhere, some people want to kill each other, but ultimately, like, you still know that, uh, one, that can land you in jail, two, you're taking away somebody's life, and you're cutting something short, so, like, you're taking away something that, uh, that we don't fully understand like you're taking away somebody's life like something that everybody has but nobody understands like how we get it or that sort of thing like just the the weight of a human life is still present in his brain but like when he starts to think about it maybe he's thinking anybody who can't or like i'm, I'm hoping that they go along the route of like uh evil is irredeemable like i hope that they sort of work that in somehow like how uh like how light reasoned it or reasoned it out and just was like that some people just can't change and he has to like he feels like he has to mediate and he has to kill the people who really cannot change i mean there is a point in the second trailer where he says to me like we're not the good guys anymore yeah you yeah i feel i feel like my my hopes are slowly dying as more information comes out and i but I really am just going to reserve all of my thoughts and my feelings for it until, like, the actual movie comes out in August.
Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's 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 all you can do at this point. Yeah. And so, uh, Ryu hands him the pen, and Light says, that "It's a good thing you have a pen, I guess." So, like, <laughs> there's no humanity left in here. <laughs> and what I find very interesting is that so Light writes down in the Death Note, Kenny Doyle, which is the person's name. Right. So he's he he starts writing it down, and it's a very like why intense stop scene. It? Like, Ooh, why not go on with? How? Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is what I, I want to go. And when Ryu says there's no need to stop at who, um, and Light's confused, and he's like, um, uh, he says how, and that confuses Light. He's like, what do you mean how, right? Yeah. And so that that to me indicates that he didn't read past the third rules. The third rule, he's not understanding that you can actually uh, details about the death uh, about the death can be included in the death note. It's not just writing someone uh, someone's name down. I didn't know it was written in there. I thought that it um. Like, that Ryuk had to explain, like, you can, or, like, or I thought that Light had to experiment and just, like, oh, this is how, this does that, that's, and so on and so on. Yeah, 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 that means in this moment in time, this is the very, this, really, this is really the first time, like, Light's, like, almost, like, touching the Death Note, I think, or something. I don't know, I'm confused because we see the, the scene where the, that Death Note falls from the sky, but he, he, he didn't know you can write down how. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... That that I just found that to be very 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 interesting. So that's where Light writes down decapitation, which is absolutely like, wow. Yeah. And we, we thought like, oh, for beginning that's beginner that's pretty good. And I mean, high the, school. The, I mean, honestly, high schoolers have some pretty fucked up minds. So I mean, honestly. <laughs> right. 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 No. And that's that's when that's when Ryo says watch. And in the second trailer, we do see like Kenny uh, getting decapitated by a car that comes by and. The ladder. You mean like of, the fall uh, trailer? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so he gets decapitated. So it's absolutely insane. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and a very creative first death. I gotta hand it to him. Yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> so after this scene, uh, after talking about this scene, um, the what I want to go into it is a uh, article that was posted by IndieWire uh, titled "Death Note Controversial Netflix Adaptation Gets Mixed Reaction at Comic Con," and so. Um, there was a pre-screening of Death Note at Comic Con, yeah, San Diego Comic Con. Do you want to talk about a bit of, about the reaction that people had, uh, Keo? All right. So from what I see, uh, from what I see here, it says that the reactions were good at the beginning, but then as the film went on, there weren't very many. Uh, like people were really quiet, and then uh, like once we reached the end of the film, like the the applause was seemed like very polite applause, like uh, yay, but not actually. Uh, not like great applause like it wasn't a standing ovation type of applause right 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 exactly so so it seems like it's uh it, it doesn't sound like it's gonna look very good so far like it's uh honestly starting to be a little bit of a little bit of a letdown i won't lie <laughs> yeah exactly like when i when i read this article like really there was one word to describe the audience reaction mild yeah mild it was mild it was not amazing oh my god or like super bored but it was just eh, okay and you got to think about the audience here these are people who go to comic con so they a uh, they are um they are people who are in the, who embrace the same culture as we do as like anime lovers and yeah. otakus and uh, all around nerds, and if those are like th th these are the people that we are, and so if those people had that reaction, most likely we're gonna have a similar one. Yeah, it it, it seems like it seems like we're gonna get an okay reaction. I mean, it's under it's it's more than likely that it's gonna be an okay film, but it's not gonna be incredible. It's not gonna be the great adaptation that it's been building up that it's gonna be, or that it's um like really gonna wow us, honestly. Exactly. Um, so it doesn't sound like it's going to be impressive so much as just cool. They did a Death Note movie, and that's that's a little bit upsetting for those of us who are who see Death Note as a very uh, very artistic and very opportune or like it's filled with opportunity. It seems like something that if you release this to the public and like actually like if Warner Brothers actually went through with this. We could have gotten something really, really good. Or, I mean, like, if we had, like, full-on production and just, like, let them, let the writers go as much as they want, like, without, like, straying from the source material to a point where it's unrecognizable, like, where uh, Dragon Ball Evolution com uh, came to. And, like, we, we really want to see something 
we really want to see these ideas taken advantage of in a in a live action setting and like just the thought of seeing like Ryuk as like either a uh, an animatronic or a pu- or a, a 3D puppet or like just the idea of um just I think the uh, the ultimate thing that people want is to see like or like we want to prove to people that the people who enjoy this stuff like who enjoy uh death note manga or uh, naruto or bleach or just all the all the shonen stuff that they can have like really deep and very thought-provoking stuff and we're and like people are gonna probably have like such a mild reaction to it because it's like this is the most psychological and interesting story that anime seems to have to offer so far i mean like it's it really pushed the boundaries of like what shonen jump could produce like what it would lo- allow people to uh yeah, read yeah, through. Yeah. like there's so many things that yeah you, you you could honestly go so many different directions with it and it would interest like a much wider audience and like i think that what we really want to see is something that um, not only appeals to the people who made it popular in the first place, but also the people who have never seen this stuff before and possibly get them into more stuff kind of like this. Well, well said, Keo. Very well said. Um, Thank you. I guess, uh, I mean, this is a perfect jumping point for the, the next article I want to bring in here and our our second last one, really. Um, this one comes from uh, Entertainment uh, Weekly, and it was about, uh, it was titled... Death Note director says scariest supervillain is Donald Trump. We're not really going to concentrate on the <laughs> Donald Trump part here because we need to talk about the right now. Okay, but seriously, uh, what we want to talk about <laughs> is the um, interview. There was this like nine-minute interview with the entire cast of Death Note, and I don't know about you, but the first thing <laughs> I want to talk about here is what the hell is Keith wearing? He's got like this like web thing around <laughs> his face, and when he's talking, it, it, like I feel like he you don't understand what he's saying. It sounds like he's talking like this, and I can't understand a single word he's saying and so basically like i feel like he hit i feel like the the, i don't know where the microphone is i feel like he like put it on his his little his little veil thing and just like we we just can't hear him at all it's just really distracting it's probably someone with a sound perch uh (laughs) further away uh a a, a boom mic i'm not gonna go into details of it and probably like he's pointing at his mouth as much as possible but like you're you're picking up what you're picking up because of this thing around his face yeah um uh, one thing I want to mention here, the, like the biggest thing, was how um, Light Turner, uh, aka Nat Wolf, uh, oh, I can't believe he's called Light Turner. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, he said like the way he got ready to act uh, for this role was he he de- dove into the Death Note anime, watched all of it, read all of the manga, and he he got his own Death Note and wrote people's names in it. What do you think of that? That whole uh, that whole approach that he had to fall into his role. Well, I feel like that's not that's um. I won't say that it's um, method acting. Method acting is basically like, um, let's say you're going to play a cab driver and you get a job as a cabbie and like you drive around New York or London or wherever your uh, film takes place and you t- sort of get into like the mentality of what it's like and what um, what it seems like to sort of uh, be in those shoes. And I think with uh, this guy, he more so did his research and uh, watched the show, read the manga, and I think it's important that he did both because... Um, if I recall properly, I'm not sure if anything got cut from the anime, like from the from the manga, because I, I mean, I have all the copies right behind me over here. Like, if people could see what I've got, like I got a huge shelf full of manga and books and stuff. But um, from what I recall, there is no uh, like changes between the two. So I mean, it is good that he was very thorough about it. So like, it, it's um, I mean, I guess it's unnecessary, but it's like he's sort of going above and beyond, and he's. Uh, and like getting the death note and getting into that mentality of like um, the sort of people he wants to, you know, like just go. So I think that's like I think that's a very good uh, way to get into your role without uh, going like to the to the levels of like method acting. Right, right, right. I mean, that's that's very well said. Uh, I, I I guess you have to appreciate that he he took that step and everything. Yes, I think a lot. I think everybody's gonna appreciate that. Like in the final product, I mean, I feel like there are gonna be a lot of good parts with this film, but at the same time, there are gonna be parts where like uh, not everybody was uh, giving the same dedication that other I- characters other people had on the call. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I I don't know, for me the rest of the interview felt like a Naruto filler episode to me. There was nothing like much more like Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well there's no 
That is well said. There man. was nothing that That's like well really said. caught my attention, ex- ex- like except for that. Like I don't know. Uh, uh, Keith was very weird, and Adam just talked about like other stuff he's already mentioned before. How you know it, it, we want to make a uh, this is not the original Death Note. This is a fresh yeah. version of Death Note. Blah blah blah. Like really, really reminding people there's a difference. There's a difference. Like yeah. I feel like he's putting yeah. up a shield before like it blows <laughs> up in his face. You know, like, it's oh, very I told like, you it was going to uh, be different. I told you it was going to be different. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, it, it just seems like he's being ready for, like, the hate. And I feel like it seems like he almost knows that it's not going to be great. But, like, I'm still going to have a lot of respect for the guys who got up every day and were just like, I'm going to work on this movie. And I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to half-ass anything. I'm going to give it, like, I'm going to give it my all today. Like, I'm not going to disrespect that, but at the same time, the final product is not always going to be representative of everybody who, uh, like, definitely, put all the work definitely. in. Definitely, definitely. Anything else you wanted to mention about this interview? Um, like you said, the guy, or the, the director is still just, like, he's, uh, he's holding up the shield for, like, later when people, like, start bitching about, like, the problems of the movie. And, like, he's just going to be like, I told you it was a fresh version. <laughs> so it's like, shut up. <laughs> Like, just listen to the criticisms and see, like, if maybe in the sequel you can do better. Like, if you do a sequel, they're probably going to do it and probably likely going to do it. They said in the interview that they're set up and ready for, like, if they do have, like, sequels uh, in the works. Like, there probably would only be one that I can think of because, like, each film could probably, like, uh, take over a season because there was only right, two right, seasons right. show anyhow. Um, I think that's pretty much. Let's leave this interview at that. That that that's all I want to say about this interview. Uh, finally, uh, a little piece of int- information here, very very quickly, um, that I found very interesting that came out an article from ComicBook.com. Um, the article reads: Original Death Note art artist inks uh, poster for Netflix live action movie. And so it, it shows us all these really cool uh, posters and everything. And Kyo, you're the you're the visual person here. When you went through this article and saw this, what were your thoughts on it? Um, it looks, I mean, like, I'm not gonna be all, like, this is, like, the Ghostbusters thing, where, like, the, the original actors came in, they're just like, we give you our blessing, like, that's not, uh, that's not what's going on here. I feel like the, uh, I, I feel like it's important to understand, like, if the original artist or the original creators are just like, oh, we approve of this, so it must be amazing, like, it's not gonna be incredible, again, like I said before, but what, uh, but the uh, little print that they put out here looks really, really nicely done. Um, it looks very much like it's painted a little bit, but it does, uh, like, it, it, it looks really nice. It does very much uh, sort of look like Nat Wolf from the, from the show, and it does very, very much, uh, it very much does capture sort of the look and the feel of the new show. But um, at the same time, it's like, we, we didn't need to see it, but um, I think it is pretty definitely. cool to see. And I guess... I really don't uh, have too much. Too, I really I mean, don't have we, too much to say about it. It's just like, it's just a nice little. It's just a exactly. nice little. Exactly, uh, uh, as well there. as um, like we saw, we saw like posters for the Death Note uh, movie co- come come around, and we we got one from Light, we got one from L, one from Ryu. Like these mo- these movie posters. What do you think of them when you saw them? Um, they do look very nice. I mean, I think I went over the whole uh, like the body looks real, and then the head is obviously uh, plastered on for like Ryu. Uh, uh, did yeah, I go did over very, that one already? Yeah, you did. But I think the the one that came out that was, since then it was the L and light one. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're clearly trying to get their style across. Um, I like the little touch of like how they're putting like the the words like written in marker or in pen or just in uh, just in ink, and it looks really. Uh, it does look very, very nice aesthetically, but um, I don't know. It looks like it, it. It just it just looks okay to me. It doesn't look like it's uh, standing out too much. It just looks uh, they they just look okay in my opinion. I don't have too much to say about them to be okay, honest. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, very interesting. Um, finally, uh, I think that's basically all the information we've gathered so far for this uh, update. Maybe we'll have a fourth one. Uh, this movie is coming out in less than a month at this point, or in exactly a month. So, um, a- any final thoughts, Kyo? I just hope that there's, like, some good stuff in it. Like, um, so far it seems like uh, El- or Light and Ryuk are the ones that are the most important so far. Like, they seem to be... They, they seem to be doing their roles just fine. I mean, like, this is, uh, these are obviously different versions of these characters, but, like, um, in, uh, this version, it seems like Ryuk is a bit more, uh, 
bit more uh, maniacal and he's more uh, manipulative. So it's a different it's a different take, but it's a very welcome take. It's not too. Uh, I mean, he's not <clears throat> he's not necessarily goofy or, or anything, but he's still. Uh, he still seems like a very fun character. I feel like Willem Dafoe was probably the best choice so far. And, uh, let's see. Um, Nat Wolf, he's doing alright. I don't have any, uh, necessarily criticisms, criticisms for him or his performance. He seems to, he seems to just be doing what he does, what he knows the, or seems to be doing the best that he can with it. And, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I just, um... I'm just kind of excited to see the movie. I mean, a little less excited than before. Right on. But still, uh, for I'm myself, I'm very excited it. for this movie. I know, I know there was a mild response, but I, I'm still hopeful. And you, you know what? You, you take it with, take everything we said here with a grain of salt. Just because the, there was a mild response, just because we're not sure if it's going to be good, doesn't mean it's not going to be good. Um, this is just our opinions. This means nothing official. It's just we're just bringing you the information that we've gathered online. Um, and for, and finally, like I just hope uh, if there. If uh, Light Turner had fa fairy godparents, if he could wish for uh, some uh, some better uh, f for an amazing movie, for a guaranteed smash hit. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. Keo, where can people find you online? Okay, if you guys want to find me online, you can find me on DeviantArt. You can find me on on uh, YouTube, and you can also find. Uh, some of my works on the Daydream Studios channel. All of the links for some of these articles are going to be in the description if you guys want to check these out yourselves. Uh, draw your own opinions. Don't take our opinions as uh, facts. Everything is subjective here. Uh, nothing is objective. Uh, feel free to uh, leave comments. Uh, give us a dislike or uh, preferably a like. So I'm handing it over to Jayan before he kicks me off his podcast. <laughs> oh, I don't say it like that. People don't think it's going to be true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, for myself, I just want to mention this very quickly. Uh, I, met, I made a video about this, but in case you're listening to this podcast and you haven't heard, uh, for the rest of the summer, uh, this podcast right now I'm doing with Keo talking about Death Note is really going to be the only anime content. I'm not going to be making any anime music or anime podcasters episode just because I want to uh, prepare all of these uh, uh, projects for the fall and really come out with a lot of anime content. And the, re the main reason is because my rap project, Lunatic Rappers, uh, I've been working on this album for two years now and it's finally coming out uh, August 24th. Pre-order is uh, August 1st. Um, um, we've worked very hard on this, and I really want to give it its dedicated time on my channel. And I believe me, uh, the break uh, from anime content is going to help me refresh myself and work on some amazing covers. I have so much cool content coming up for anime stuff, anime podcasters, a bunch of different stuff. It's going to be really fun, uh, and I can't wait for you guys to listen to. Just uh, understand that I need this once long break. It's just uh, I need it just because I for this rap project and because I want to prepare some amazing content for you guys. It's the only reason. So, that's it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this uh, Death Note update. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more of Death Note updates, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out this video. I do a cool series right here. Check out this awesome video. And if you're an awesome fan, you can also pledge to my Patreon, which is always very appreciated. I produce videos every single week, so make sure to hit that beautiful subscribe button and the bell. Bye, guys.